So here's an application of the cylindrical coordinate system and how it might be helpful. Notice in this case, we're going to find the volume of the region W. And here's a picture of it. The region W is between the paraboloids z equals x squared plus y squared. If you did the review that we did earlier, you saw that um, before. So x squared plus y squared equals z is this kind of reddish paraboloid down here. And then 36 minus 3x squared minus y squared. So minus x squared minus y squared turns that paraboloid upside down. Multiplying by a factor of 3 makes it more narrow. And then shifting it up 36 units. So we've got one up here. We've got one down here. And they've contained themselves into this. I don't know. This thing always reminds me of like one of those, um, you know, those air freshener things. I don't know what they're called. But you get these crazy air freshener things and you kind of pull the top off and it makes your house smell nice. That's what this reminds me of. I don't know. All right, but we're going to find the volume of it. And again, for instructional purposes, we're going to find the volume using triple integrals. So they're calling the region W. So we're going to integrate over W and we just want volume. So we just want DVs. So again, dv is that idea of a little bit of x, a little bit of y, and a little bit of z. So it produces this three-dimensional um, rectangular piece. So that's my dv. There's infinitely many of them, infinitesimally small inside of this egg-shaped thing. <laughs> and we are going to find the volume by summing them up. If you sum up volumes, you get volumes. So we're going to sum this thing up using a triple integral. And we're going to do so in polar coordinates. Now, you've got a little thing coming up soon where we're going to explore why this is. But do you remember with polar coordinates, dA became r dr d theta? Well, for very similar reasons, in cylindrical coordinates, dV is going to become r dr d theta dz. See, if we kept it rectangular, hey, maybe I should have done that. Let me, let me back up a minute. Suppose we had kept things rectangular, then dv would have been some you know, dz, dy, dx, or whatever one of the combinations of those we would have done over that region w. But since we're going to go cylindrical, and I hope you'll see why here in a moment, that dv of dz, dy, dx, just like dy, dx in polar coordinates became r dr d theta, and since cylindrical coordinates are nothing more than polar coordinates three-dimensionally, we're still going to have r dr d theta and then dz. Now also, we can do this in any order because we're just multiplying things together we can do dz first, we can do dy first, we can do it however we want. Now because of, oops, sorry, because of the way our functions are defined, z is equal to something and z is equal to something, I'm going to argue that this triple integral will be a little friendlier if we do r dz. And then as, you're, as you'll see after that, it doesn't really matter if we do dr, d theta, or d theta, dr. You'll see, because we're going to go cylindrical. Now, what's cylindrical coordinates again? Polar coordinates in 3D. All right. So dz. So z varies. So imagine this thing. We slice it up, as you've seen for a while now. Don't fall into that trap of going just when x and y are 0 and coming up to the top of the egg. You've got to think about all possible combinations. Like out here, there's a z value that goes boom to boom. And then back here, it's hard to see, but there's a z value that goes boom to boom. And so we want to make sure we get all changes in z. So the bottom z is the z equals x squared plus y squared. But wait, let's go polar. It, cylindrical. Let's go cylindrical. In cylindrical coordinates, isn't it true that x squared plus y squared equals r squared? That's the beauty of it. We kind of get this thing more simplified. Instead of x squared plus y squared, we can just say r squared. And the top is z equals 36 minus 3x squared minus 3y squared. What we could say here is, 36 minus 3 times 
If you factor out that minus 3, you'll be left with x squared plus y squared. So 36 minus 3 r squared. So instead of the whole shooting match here, we can make the top limit just 36 minus 3 r squared. All right, now, like you saw in the review, if we now collapse things down to the xy plane, in terms of the widest part of this thing, if you project it down into the xy plane, it's this circular region of intersection that we're going to see down there in that xy plane. So let's move it on down there and see what it would look like. The point of intersection is where those two functions come together. Remember the 36 minus 3 x squared minus 3 y squared intersects with the x squared plus y squared. So if we kind of algebraically 4x squared, algebraically 4, 4y squared, divide everything by 4, Ah, x squared plus y squared equals 9. That's a circle centered at the origin with a radius of? Yeah, 3, exactly, because x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So if r squared is 9, r is 3. We've got now a circle of radius 3. A circle of radius 3. That's why we like this cylindrical, a.k.a. in this case, um, polar coordinates. So polar, polarly speaking, r is going to vary from 0 to 3, and theta, in order to get a full circular revolution, theta is going to go from 0 to 2 pi. So we're just setting these things up. We're doing a lot of the same kind of work we've always done, but now we've got some options. We've got some ways that might prove helpful to make life a little bit easier. Now, especially easier if you had to do this old school integration, this would be a much simpler approach. That's why it's here, why it's part of this course. But just to have a more well-rounded experience, I hope you see the benefit of the cylindrical coordinate.